Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, Art and I are with the lovely Dr. Liz Lister talking about all things health. Hello, Dr. Liz. Great. Uh, Hello. You know, our audience, uh, many of them are uh, getting older in their, uh, they're certainly over 50, we're 50 and above, but in their 60s and, and later, and uh, they are beginning to uh, getting empty nest syndrome if they have had kids or maybe a spouse has moved on for either a divorce or, or death or something like that. And people are finding themselves not so much surrounded by friends and family anymore as people move away and do things like that. And uh, being alone could be uh, very, very um, uh, challenging uh, to somebody who yeah. has had a very active life. Also, in the last couple of years, COVID, a lot of people were isolated from work mm -hmm. and their right. normal things. Uh, and I've been hearing bits and pieces of um, uh, stories on TV and, and anecdotal from friends about what being alone does to change our if our mental health, if, if not our physical health. Yeah. Are there, have the, you had any studies on this uh, uh, so that people could be aware yes. of this and, and maybe things to do about it? Yes, absolutely. This is a growing public health concern. It's estimated with various surveys that have been done over the last few years that at least a third of people over age about 45 or so report feeling lonely. They report that they often feel lonely. And that percentage seems to increase that by the time that people over 80 were surveyed, that as many as half of them reported often feeling lonely. Sure. We know this, yeah, we know this is a big health concern. It is associated with increased impact of, uh, increased onset of chronic illnesses, increased utilization of the medical system, increased uh, mortality, actually. Some uh -huh. people say it's worse than smoking. Wow. Well, are you talking well, about it, uh, 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 illness related uh, fatalities or suicide? No, none of the above, although it includes that. But what I'm talking about is that when you control for the illnesses, people who report feeling lonely on a higher frequency have higher incidence of mortality, the higher chance of dying. Yeah. And the only difference in the, the risk factors are the reports of the feeling lonely. So it's very important. And to your point that you talked about earlier, as we get older, life changes, our family structure changes, people develop illnesses that they might have reduced mobility and be less able to socialize. Yeah. Uh, they might have the loss of a partner as sure. we go through life. Uh, so there's a lot of reasons that as people get older, there's a higher incidence of reporting uh, loneliness, at least in the United States. Other countries have some nice systems, and we've talked about this here uh, in, your st in your channel about countries that have really good social networks yeah. built into the fabric of their society, and they have people routinely living in great health, feeling good, lower incidence of illnesses due to the social connection. So that's getting a lot of attention now in in our country, in the United States. Yeah. Well, it kind of makes sense. Um, your um, loneliness is really an emotional, psychological issue. And of course, your, psychology, your, your brain does affect your body. Um, right. And as your body can affect your brain, you know, you get sick. That's right. And it, it makes you a little crazy sometimes, if if not depressed, but it works the other mm -hmm. way, too. So if you're lonely, people aren't visiting you. You've lost all your friends. Um, and of course, loneliness is one of those things you can be in a crowd and feel lonely. And so it really yes. when you speak of the connection, I think that's really what it is. It's we need a human connection with people. We do. That's right. 
and it is the the discussion now is broadening that it's not just the mental aspects of it that it's actually having a incredible significant effect on physical health uh, so people who report a higher incidence of loneliness there's higher blood pressure higher incidence of heart disease maybe as much as a third like a 30 percent increase in heart disease among those folks uh, and then of course depression and to the point that you mentioned including uh, anxiety including suicide uh, which of course are like the horrible worst case uh, eventualities of, of that degree of, of feeling lonely, yeah. but also cognitive decline. So not just the mental health and how we feel, but the function of the brain yep. tends to decline. You think about activities that we do interacting with each other, right? Yeah. Playing, playing bridge, playing mahjong, yep. which I'm learning, uh, <laughs> preventive health, learning how to play it. Uh, you know, all these activities that we do together also work the brain. Dancing, we've talked about this, how it integrates all the circuitry of the brain and the balance yeah. center, and people avoid injury, and there's just simply lower mortality. So when we lose those uh, opportunities and activities, uh, it has a direct impact on people's health and mortality. Yeah. Uh, is well, there any, uh, yeah, it's a celebrating is there any... act too, I might mm -hmm. add. Um, have known this for a long time, and as we get older, we we feel it whether it's instinctively or personally, and we can see uh, our elders. Now I'm an elder, but we can see our elders going through that kind of process, and and their right. connections or lack of connections. And it's really important to reach out, you know, and visit and keep in touch. Uh, That's right. You know, particularly when somebody's living alone. Well, yeah, it seems to me that that self-diagnosis is difficult uh, in this particular case, because if you're alone and feeling blue, uh, you're alone and feeling blue, and you're not necessarily going to think about, well, this is strange, and I should do something about it, uh, like uh, join a, a Tai Chi class or uh, an art right. class online or whether it be online or in person. So, but so to recognize this in other people, it's kind of difficult. I guess uh, if the person still sees a doctor regularly, a doctor should probably, if they see some decline, ask if they're alone. Right. I doubt that's asked very often, is it? They're working on that. That's absolutely correct. And that's being worked on. Uh, tools that are being developed that, that exist, but they're being improved and worked on for doctors to use in their office to ask about it because it is as big of a, as big or greater of a risk factor even than smoking. All the questions that we already ask, this is now being incorporated and introduced because the importance of it is being recognized. Hmm. I just wrote that down. Greater than smoking. What a, what a uh, shock a, to be right. Right. Very shocking. But it's yeah. part. Yes. It's and part. It's, it's part of our audience who are living longer. More sustain, if not healthier, more sustainable lives, and this is something right, that, right. like smoking, doesn't kill you overnight. It takes years and years and years. So, it would be great mm -hmm. if we could help people recognize this, or we could recognize it in ourselves, and eliminate that as part of the negative uh, uh, force that's on our health. So, again, it's another thing that people are living longer lives, and these things are going to happen because life around you changes more significantly than. It has for people in the past who, if you passed away at 60, you were probably still engaged with all your friends. They were still around. Your kids were still in the house. So right. what an important topic. That's right. Yes, and the a, there's, there's help. People can get help if they're feeling lonely. The AARP, which I've been a proud member of since the minute I turned 50, I signed up right away. Uh, they have community <laughs> connection tools. Uh, and there's also, I learned about a an institute called Area Agencies on Aging, AAA, Area Agencies on Aging, which is a network of 620, over 600 organizations. That's just in the United States. Uh, they have information, assistance, meals, uh, op caregiver support, opportunities to really make an impact and help people be able to interact with others and uh, 
and not experience loneliness so that we can take care of each other and improve our health as a society as a whole. Good, a good, good reference. Uh, okay. I want to exhort all of our viewers who are in their second act, theoretically that's over 50, uh, not to think of yourself as needing it, but you need to go out and make a friend, invite somebody to play cards, take a walk, go visit, bring in their paper, do their grocery shopping for them. You need to get active in your old age and go find other people who need your assistance. Good advice, John. Awesome. There you go. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.